let's let's just for giggles start at the bottom of the board, right? Like you've got the Pistons sitting there at Bet MGM at 13 and a half wins. And there's a hilarious <laughs> story about how they've made Wingstop millions of dollars this year um, that we can get into when we've got more time. But they're 8 and 46, right? So they're two thirds of the way through the season and they have won just eight games. Now, the, the catch here is that three of those wins have come in their last 10. So maybe they're kind of slowly improving. They put that massive losing streak in the rearview mirror. Maybe it feels like there's a little bit of value there on the Pistons to win. Yeah, six is a big, <laughs> it's not so stupid. Six more wins is a big number for them, though, down the stretch in the final third of the season, given that they've won only eight at this point. Do we... Do we see any value in the Pistons, for example, with the lowest win total in the league right now, Bet MGM, 13 and a half? Can they win six more games, J Rob? I mean, if, if it took them 54 games to win right. eight, you're we're, we're asking them to win six out of 28 games. Now, again, I was told there'd be no math when I when I when I left school, but I I, I you know what? The under is, is at plus money. I think it'd be worth it. But I think one of the funniest things that we had uh, somebody tell us on the show this week is, I don't want to spend my, my, my spring and summer checking Detroit Pistons box scores. <laughs> so, so <laughs> I, th- I, I can think of a hundred other uh-huh. things I'd rather do than wake up in the morning and figure out how the Pistons did today. Uh, I, I mean, if I had to, I think I would bet the under only because it's at plus money. I mean, right. six and twenty-two isn't. I mean, they, they were eight and forty-six. I mean, granted, you think they're going to run into a couple of games here and there, especially at the end of the season when maybe they're playing teams that have already clinched, or maybe they have right. nothing to play for, and all of a sudden they they figure it out. But I think it would be a stay away. But if I had to make a bet, I would bet the under uh, at at plus money and under and go on under thirteen and a half. A team that's part of the play-in conversation right now 30 and 25 the magic are right there they would be in the play-in playing a, a play-in game in Miami right now if the season ended today we know it doesn't we know they've got 27 games left they've already won 30 and their win total sits at 45 and a half at bet MGM uh, a little juiced uh, it's a little shaded to the over at minus 125 but a chance to get into the play-in this team Bancaro looks pretty good the last few weeks especially um I think if you're asking the Magic to win what 16 of their final 27 games I think there's a team that chasing a playoff spot I, I would feel good about them doing that down the stretch it would be a marked improvement over their pace to this point but I think you get a young team who's hungry who's trying to if, if not scratch and fight and claw their way up and out of the play-in tier, at, ver- at the very least, just stay in the play-in tier. They won 7-10 going into the All-Star break. I think I feel all right about the Magic right now, J-Rod. I'm with, I'm with you. I'm with you. I, I definitely like the over in this. Uh, they have the easiest schedule of the, the rest of the way. I mean, three with the Hornets, two with the Pistons, the Blazers, the Grizzlies, the, the, the Wizards. Two more with the Raptors. That's a lot of wins. And for a team that is hungry and hunting for a playoff spot to get in there, I I think the Heat are off their schedule now. No more against them. Again, to me, it's a bad division. The team that that you're you're fighting with, you don't have to play anymore. You got a lot of bad teams in, in on your schedule, and I think Orlando gets there. I think they, you know, it's it's going to be a sweat a little bit. But you're telling me they got to go 16 and 11 down the stretch against. You know, when when eight, That's nine of those of games are against awful teams, I'll take that. Yeah. Uh, another young team that is probably a year or two ahead of schedule, although they've fallen back out of the play-in race on the Western side in the last couple of weeks. And we talked about them, again, when we did the Southwest Division catch-up last week. Uh, the Rockets, win total at 36.5, minus 125 at Bet MGM. If you look at the way they went into the break, though, the Rockets, you know, lost seven of their final 10 into the break. Um, At home, good team. You you like the way they've handled themselves at home 
a, a young team that obviously looks more comfortable, I think, at home. You get them away from Houston, though, and they're an abject disaster. They're 5-21 and 21 on the road, J-Rod. 24-30 and 30 right now with a win total sitting at where it is. I, I don't know if I do see them winning 13 of their final 24 games. I know that's only a couple games over 500, but I think maybe they've shot their shot, and what we see from the Rockets is a young team looking kind of tired down the stretch because they took their run, and it wasn't good enough, and you can see them sort of falling off in that the last couple of weeks here leading up to the break. Yeah, the only thing that gives me any interest in this uh proposition chris is that they don't need to have a winning record you know they could be 13 and 15 down the stretch and get to that number and get us to the pay window i mean i'm looking at i'm looking at the teams on their schedule it's equally good equally bad i mean they get they still have three with the blazers two with the spurs two with the wizards three with the jazz but they also have three with the suns Three with Oklahoma City, two with the Clippers, one with the Wolves. That smells like a 500 team, right? That smells yeah. 500 down the stretch to me, and they don't have to be 500. You've got a little bit of a wiggle room. I think they get there. It'll be a sweaty sweat, but I would take it. Yeah. Minus 108 is the is the last is the odds I got for the over 36 and a half. Listen, it's money in the bank. They already got us 24. They've done the heavy lifting. Yeah, you don't have to be. You don't. You don't. You don't have to have a winning record down the stretch. I think they get there. Are you are you buying the Mavericks at all down the stretch? I mean, right now they're 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 in the play-in tournament as the seventh seed, but they're only a game behind New Orleans to get out of it and and assure themselves a playoff series. Where 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 does your take on the Mavericks? I don't know if my dog was barking quite loud enough for you to hear it while you were asking that question, but that has to be a good omen. And and I agree. The Mavericks are this really scary team where if they can stay completely healthy, are going to pop at some point. Now, I'm not looking them to to bet to win that division. That's going to just be more about the regular season, the ability to stay healthy. New Orleans has more depth, uh, pretty much a similar schedule going forward. So I'll put away the Mavericks there, but I think it is time to start watching some of these games closely and looking at things like Mavericks to win the West at 16 to one. I think there's a great chance they make the Western conference finals there. And then you have a chance to cash out, buy out, kind of figure out what you want to do with all that equity. Then Uh, the Mavericks are a team where if they are healthy too, I'm going to be looking to bet them series to series. So it's time to start really considering some of those. Uh, Again, the only concern is it's going to be tough for them to get out of the play in tournament and, it is a scary spot to be in to have to win two games. That'll be favored in both of those games pretty comfortably. So I wonder again, if maybe start looking if that to win the West number gets out to even plus 2000 sprinkle a little bit, but come playoff time series to series, I'm going to be looking hard at Dallas. You did a pretty extensive study video study on Caleb Williams that you posted the other day, 20 different plays and, The headline jumps out, especially for Bears fans, I got to think, and football fans in general, the next Patrick Mahomes, question mark. Um, Without giving it away, what did you think after doing a deep dive on Caleb Williams? And is this guy worth the, the first overall pick in the draft and worth the Bears sort of retooling and rebuilding around? Yeah, no, he's awesome. I mean, he's a, he's a rare talent. He's a very unique guy. Um, I think you look at his play style, his ability to create outside of the pocket, you know, you know, we've seen some of the Patrick Mahomes comparisons for over a year and you can see some of it, some of it, you can't ever predict that, you know, Patrick Mahomes, no one would have ever guessed Patrick Mahomes would become who he is now. It's like, so, you know, we can't hold Williams to that type of level, but you look physically what he can do, super accurate guy who can get outside the pocket, his ability to make throws across his body, these explosive down th- downfield throws um you know everything that you want to see is pretty much there if you watch it it's it's just it was a little bit tough this last year at usc usc wasn't really a great team this past year and so you know i walked away from that and saying okay is there stuff for him to work on sure he can be baited into throwing some interceptions against zone coverage you want to see more experience a little bit more poise um sometimes when under pressure a lot of that stuff is normal though you look at the, any of the top quarterbacks you're going to say hey they could do better against pressure like shocker like that's not breaking news it's why defenses throw pressure at guys so um really strong prospect overall i think his his biggest concerns to me are, are not you know really on par with uh with most number one picks i think he's he's pretty rock solid so i i do think he'll be 
pretty easy decision, I think, at number one.